Delete. Delete. <laughs> Delete. Oh. God. He's just too beautiful in this one. I love you. The way you laugh. <laughs> How you use excessive hand gestures when you talk. I love the little things. How you grab your chin when you think. How you get annoyed at me when I look at you for too long. <laughs> How you hate it when I make you listen to my music, even though I hate it when you do that. I love that I hate you. <laughs> I love that you practice your smile in the mirror. <laughs> I love that your hair sticks straight up. I love that your mouth hangs open when you sleep. I love that you're sometimes so oblivious to my feelings. I love that you try your best. I love that I love you. I love that I hate you. I love you. God, I wish I could just drive over to his house, barge through the door, and recite all through all of that to him. But I can't. Because we're no longer together. We dated for a grand total of seven months in teenager years. That's a decade of marriage and three children. <laughs> Those seven months were the most important months of my life so far. Way more important than my Hunger Games phase. Far more important than the time I spent trying to go to Mako Island to become a mermaid. And far more important than my crush on Lenny Bruce. Yes, this was a seven months of first for me. First boyfriend, first kiss, first date, first time, first breakup. It was a time of exponential growth. The first time I tasted somebody else's spit, I had a coughing fit. <laughs> I mistakenly called them by your name. I was let down, it wasn't the same. I'm doing fine, trying to derail my one-track mind, regaining my self-worth in record time. But I can't help but think of your other in the bed that was mine. The first time we hung out, we had a movie marathon. What I knew was that he was a very, very hot boy who happened to love acting and Shakespeare. Oh my god, just my type. What I didn't know was how disagreeable he would be. Before we ever started dating, we had an argument for an hour straight about whether or not silent film was and comedy was important to contemporary pictures. How pretentious of us. How have you never seen I Love Lucy? I mean, I have. I just don't like it. How can you not love I Love Lucy? It's literally in the title. I don't know. I guess it's just not my type of humor. I like dramas better. How emo of him. Well, at least tell me you like silent film, Chaplin, Keaton. No, it's kind of stupid. What? Silent film is the most important thing to ever happen to contemporary pictures other than maybe the Hollywood Renaissance. So you're telling me that silent film is more important than this film we just watched, which was Birdman? Yes, I am. Well, you're wrong because the direction is freaking amazing and the cinematography is shot in one continuous shot and Michael Keaton's a freaking visionary, blah, 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 blah. And even though his argument was completely and utterly incorrect, I think I fell in love with him in that exact moment. Now bite your tongue. It's too dangerous to fall so young. Take back what you said. Can't lose what you never had. 
I feel no need to forgive, but I might as well. But let me kiss your lips so I know how it felt. Pay for my coffee and leave before the sun goes down. Walk for hours in the dark, feeling all hell. I not only grew in learning how to love a total complete asshole, it was my most creative time I ever experienced. I learned that I wanted to be a director just as much as I wanted to be an actor. He inspired me to start my first screenplay, which I then scrapped, but then I started my second and my third, and I scrapped those as well. I had never felt such an inspiration to be an artist. He empowered me to validate my artistic voice and try new forms of art. I don't know what I was thinking when I said I would be a director. What are you talking about? Show me what you have. I deleted it. What? You're joking. I'm not. Katie, you can't do this to yourself. Or can I? Stop it. You can't expect yourself to be Greta Gerwig immediately, love. Finish what you have and we can go from there, but when I delete everything, I can't help you. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. I want you to be great. I love you. <laughs> the way you laugh. How you get so passionate about things. The brightness in your eyes when you look at me. I love the little things. The passion you have for movies. <laughs> How you stare at me with so much love. I love all the new music you show me. I love your beautiful curly hair. I love your Jewish nose and your radiant smile. I love that you love me. I love that you hate me. I love you. You've got a nine to five, so I'll take the night shift. And I'll never see you again, if I can help it. In five years, I hope the songs feel like covers, dedicated to new lovers. You've got a nine to five, so I'll take the night shift, and I'll never see you again, if I can help it. In five years, I hope the songs feel like covers, dedicated to new lovers. The last seven months have been the best of my life. It's as simple as that. I hope that when the bad feelings fade away, I can be grateful to my best friend for my exponential growth. If you're traveling in the North County Fair, where the winds hit heavy on the borderline, remember me to one who lives there. She once was a true love of mine. If you're going where the snowflakes storm, where the rivers freeze and summer ends, remember, please see for me, she's wearing a coat so warm to keep her from the howling winds. Please see for me if her hair's hanging long. If it rolls and flows all down her breast, please see from me if her hair's hanging long. That's the way I remember her best. I'm wondering if she remembers me at all. Many times I've often prayed in the darkness of my night, in the brightness of my day. So if you're going to the North County Fair, where the winds hit heavy on the borderline, remember me to one who lives there. She once was a true love of mine. You know what's so ironic about all of this? We got back together. Two more times. I had to say goodbye to him three fucking times. I mean, at that point, all a girl can say is I'm over it. And mind you, all of those three times he broke up with me. What kind of shit is that? 
The first time we got back together was for a grand total of two weeks. <gasps> yes, it was very exciting for me. We decided to go on a date to the beach, which I had never done with him before because we didn't do much of anything when we first dated. So the beach turned into a fun time in my truck. And then a few days later, he decided we weren't a good idea. Oh, and I was mad. <laughs> I even decided to block him for a grand total of 0.2 seconds. Yes, he was never going to hurt me again. No, sir. I was done. D-O-N-E done with him. And then when those 0.2 seconds were over, I thought, well, he clearly doesn't mean it. I mean, when he gets his senses cleared up, we'll get back together and everything will go back to normal. We decided to remain friends. And just because we weren't together doesn't mean our chemistry stopped. And the more he flirted with me, the more I was fueled to want him more. Then, a couple of months later, he decided he loved me again. Ha ha ha, hip hip hooray. And this time he was different. He was much more gentler with me. Or at least that's what I thought he would be like. Because I never actually saw him in person. Our relationship took 100% place on the phone. I never got to touch him in person. Miss Rona's to blame for that. And then, poof. Life happened and he broke his promise to me. He said he wouldn't hurt me again. And he did. Now time has passed and he's moved on. I made him a playlist he never listened to. That playlist is now mine. It's quite a lonely playlist. He doesn't respond to my texts anymore. I don't respond out of spite. There's this playlist he just recently made called My Playlist Good Luck. I can't help but wonder if it's for a new girl in his life. And why wouldn't he listen to my place list when he just made that one? And if my suspicions are correct, I mean, I don't even know how to act. Here I am stalking his social media. Meanwhile, he's probably off canoodling with some hoe. I didn't mean that. Yes, I did. I think most of my relationship with Tim took place in my mind. I mean, all of our communication was over the... Phone. Texting. Texting. That's how my generation develops relationships. <laughs> how strange. I was reduced down to a kicked puppy. Waiting. Just waiting for him to text back. Text first. I would post on Instagram just with hopes that he would like my picture. I was in a constant staring contest with my phone. Waiting. Waiting. It never came. And God, looking through the old text messages is awful. I sounded so pathetic. Here, let me read to you some of these text messages. I took the Polaroid down in my room. I'm pretty sure you have a new girlfriend. It's not as if I don't like you. It just makes me sad whenever I see it. Cause I like to be gone most of the time And you like to be home most of the time If I stay in one place, I lose my mind I'm a pretty impossible lady to be with Yeah, no shit <laughs> I never met a bike that I didn't wanna ride And I never met a Marcus that I didn't like You said you liked all of the books that I recommended Even if you didn't, I wouldn't be offended I sound like such a child. I had a dream that I had to drive to Madison to deliver a painting for some silly reason. I took a wrong turn and ended up in Michigan. 
Paul Barabo took me to the giant tire swing, gave me a push and he started singing. The sound of our voices made us forget everything that had ever hurt our feelings. I never met a bike that I didn't want to ride, and I never met a Marcus that I didn't like. You said you liked all of the books that I recommended. Even if you didn't, I wouldn't be offended. God. I wish someone would have just told me to stop texting him. Now I'm home for less than 24 hours. That's hardly time to take a shower. Hug my family and take your picture off the wall. Check my emails, write a song, and make a few phone calls before it's time to leave again. I've got one hand on the steering wheel, one waving out the window. If I'm a spinster for the rest of my life, my arms will keep me warm on cold and lonely nights. I never met a bike that I didn't want to ride. And I never met a Marcus that I didn't like. <laughs> you said you liked all of the books that I recommended. Even if you didn't, I wouldn't be offended. 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 I hate you. I hate that you don't respond. I hate that I haven't seen you in months. I hate that you don't even care. I hate that you get my hopes up by starting conversations with having no intention of finishing them. I hate that all I can do is think of you. I hate that... You just keep getting more and more beautiful every day. I hate that my parents hate you. I hate that we're continuously forced to be apart. I hate that I love you. I hate that I hate you. I hate you. Stop being a fucking bitch. Why aren't you helping me? Why is no one helping me? Please stop talking to me like that. You know I hate when you yell. I don't want to talk to you right now. You're just going to come running back to me like you always do. It's what you always do. Get the fuck out of my face. A half an hour later, he incessantly apologized, begging me not to break up with him. I forgave him. He was right about me. I let him use me as a verbal punching bag every time life got difficult. But I guess what they say is true. Love is blinding. I've forgotten what it's like to be touched, kissed. I feel touch starved. I think it's impossible to know the true meaning of touch if you've never been truly touched. And I don't mean a simple pat or hug. I mean toe-curdling, blood-boiling, jaw-dropping touch. I've, I've had fantasies before, as every high school girl does. But I never knew that that one simple act could bring so much perspective and delusion at the same time. Perspective because... Everything falls into place. I finally felt feminine. I've always felt partially feminine and struggling to locate the other parts. But with him, I was a woman. And a strong one at that. The delusion comes in when my perfect world starts crumbling. With each crack, I cover my eyes with love and delusion. But nevertheless, I was so goddamn happy, nothing else mattered. I finally felt beautiful. I never felt like that before. I had always been told the contrary. But with him, I was beautiful. He wanted me. He wanted all of me. And I wanted him equally. When you were young, you were the king of carrot flowers. 
And how you built the towers tumbling through the trees In holy rattlesnakes that fell all round your feet And mom would stick a fork right into daddy's shoulder And dad would throw the garbage all across the floor As we would lay and learn what each other's bodies were for and this is the room one afternoon I knew I could love you. And from above you how I sank into your soul. Into that secret place that no one dares to go. And mom would drink until she was no longer speaking. And dad would dream of all the different ways to die. Each one a little more than he could dare to try. I wonder why, on the journey to adulthood, adults lose the magic of love. When hearing that I am in love, my parents' first response is, No, you are not. And I don't blame them for this response even though it does hurt my feelings. I find it curious that because I am young, I'm experiencing childish fantasies. Even if I was experiencing a childish fantasy, that's for me to determine. So I wonder, what makes you lose the magic of love? Young people have the privilege of experiencing everything for the first time. We see the silver linings in life. Why would anyone want to take that away? God. My relationship with my parents got so bad for a while. I couldn't even have a conversation with my dad without starting an argument. One night after rehearsals, it got bad. In my mind, all I heard was, I'm so sorry. I can fix it, I promise, I can fix it. Please just let me explain. We are so disappointed in, in you, Katie. What the hell were you thinking? I don't know, please, please just let me explain. There, there's a reason. All Fs, we're so disappointed in you. You've been lying to us for months. Please don't blame him. I decided to take a two-week secret vacation from schoolwork and homework the first quarter of my junior year. Turns out it wasn't so secret. When I got home, I was in a load of shit. You see, grades are taken very seriously in my family. My dad was seated at the dining room table, looking dejected, withdrawn. I never seen him before like that. I decided to take this break because I'm dun -da -da -da, lazy. <laughs> I thought the only important things going on in life were with my boyfriend, and it didn't matter if I did a few assignments late, and then a few assignments turned into a lot of assignments, and before I knew it, I was an F student, and it was all my fault. That night, my parents looked at me as if I were a stranger. I fell asleep crying. And of course they blamed him, no matter what I said. <laughs> and he probably was a distraction, like they said, but that just made me hate them so much. And I think they hated me a little bit too. At that time, I started thinking a lot about when I was little. As you grow up, it gets really hard to get along like we used to. I don't know how to be what I wanted to be when I was five. Sometimes brown eyes, sometimes green. La, 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 la. Bike rides, <laughs> snow hikes and Christmas lights. Sometimes freezing, sometimes warm. I don't know if I can love that anymore. 
Cause I've got it all, got it all mistaken For a meaningful life and a fun family vacation Like when I used to ride roller coasters with my dad when I was little, my dad was my roller coaster buddy. We made a pact that every roller coaster we rode, we would scream blood curdling screams just to annoy the other passengers. Ah! <laughs> and we would laugh and laugh. He was the first person I ever rode a roller coaster with. You know, now that I think of it, he's afraid of roller coasters. He was just doing that for me. Or when a swimming pool in a hotel was a gift from God. <laughs> One summer, as the last hurrah before school, my family packed up to Orlando. My mom surprised us with wet and wild tickets. My sister rode every single water slide, even convincing my family to ride a few of them. <laughs> God, that was fun. Like love, we're like a family. I don't know how to be. Maybe I just want to get married. Or maybe I just want to fall asleep. <laughs> but at least I know that the world is spinning when we're tangled in the bed sheets. And at least I know that my mom is breathing when we talk on the phone. And at least I know that my house won't burn down, down to the ground. Or maybe it will. If I've been in love before, and I'm pretty sure I have, then I'm pretty sure that my house could burn down, down to the ground tomorrow. If I've been in love before, and I know that I have, then I know that my house could burn down, down to the ground tomorrow. Matter can never be created nor destroyed. I believe this applies to love. We are all matter tumbling about in this tenacious universe until somehow we stumble upon someone who's going to change our lives forever. Can never be created nor destroyed. I'll always carry a fondness for my first love for the rest of my life. We are eternal beings. That's an awful long time to fall in love as much as possible. La 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 <laughs> Her manners were pronounced to be very bad indeed. A mixture of pride and impertinence. She had no conversation, no style, no beauty. I desperately wish I was in a Jane Austen novel. I could never, though, because I don't look the part. Girls who look like that are whisked away on horseback by Mr. Darcy or wooed by Count Vronsky. I wish I looked like those girls. And I know it's not real. None of it's real. But it would be nice to know that my happy ending was coming. I want to be looked at as a serious lady. So come on, come on, come on, come on. Didn't I make you feel like you were the only thing? Yeah, didn't I give you nearly anything that I wanted possibly can? How do you know I did? <laughs> My favorite singer is Janis Joplin. Her messy hair. Her vibrant clothes that hang off of her as if she were some priestess from an ancient world. She never had to sing pretty. No, she sang with all the grit and hurt that had built up in her over the years. And that is not a traditionally pretty sound. She wasn't even traditionally pretty. 
I mean, if anything, she was ugly. But I thought she was the most beautiful woman I had ever seen. I was sitting in Mama Rose, my red truck, watching the airplanes land at the gate of the airport. It's where I go to get some peace of mind. And as I'm watching this plane come tumbling down onto the runway, wondering where they came from, listening to Love and Touch and Squeezin' by Journey, this disgusting man in his mid-thirties, who's balding, by the way, comes waltzing over to my truck and knocks on my window. And I immediately know I'm in trouble, so I turn down my music and roll down my window, and he says, Hey, I've seen you park here a few times. I work around here. I was just wondering what your name is. I'm 17. God bless, woman. God bless? God bless! The audacity of this balding motherfucker says God bless? I mean, the sexualization of teenage girls is infuriating. Just because I am at the edge of being legal does not give you the right to make me this victim of your nasty sexual fantasies. Ugh. I believe women are the most powerful human beings on earth. We have intuition and strength. An internal mind game we play. It's having instinct. Women are sensual beings. It's knowing what you want and fighting for it. It's being the smartest person in the room. Teenage girls are the same thing, only we don't know our power yet. It's like being the Hulk, but not being exposed to gamma radiation. We're still the soft-spoken Bruce Banner. It's being hurt so many times that you have no other option than to get stronger. It's knowing that the world isn't going to stop shitting on you until you shit back. It's being beat down by a boy so many times that you don't even feel like arguing anymore. It's when you realize that that boy is nothing to you. That's when your woman's superpowers start tingling and suddenly you're transformed into the Hulk and you're rampaging through New York City, taking no prisoners, kicking ass and taking names. That's what it is to be a woman. I've realized that I've been looking at this all wrong. I am not alone. I have my friends. I have my family. And I have Marcus. Marcus is my friend. No, my best friend. And I adore him. <laughs> One day, Marcus and I are going to live in New York City in a studio apartment and live like little old Jewish ladies with our many, many bears. That's the plan, at least. <laughs> I've been so caught up in this coming-of-age melodrama that I've forgotten what I have. I have my friends. I have my family. And I have Marcus. The day after we found out that my boyfriend had moved on for good, Marcus and I decided to go to the beach and sit in the rain and thunder. So we're driving in Mama Rose, my red truck, on our way to Lido Key, crossing this bridge. You see, there's a special thing about this bridge. You can't see what lies ahead. All you can see is sky and palm trees and ocean, and it's beautiful. So we're chugging along on this goddamn beautiful bridge, and we're just trying to get across, and I can't even hear myself think, because all I'm hearing blasting in my ears is this song, Superman by R.E.M. I am, I am, I am Superman, and I know what's happening. I am, I am, I am Superman, and I can do anything. <gasps> and as the rain was pouring down on Mama Rose, Marcus, and I, 
and this song was blasting in our ears, I realized something. I realized that the description of this play is wrong. This isn't the story of a teenage breakup. This is the liberation of one fucking strong, chubby little half-Jew. I am Katie Cairo. I am a grandfather clock that cannot wait to chime. I feel as if I've sat still for too long. I like screaming to music in my truck with Marcus. I feel things way too deeply. I love knowing that I can change the world. I wonder if time is speeding up or slowing down. I hope to never settle. I am Katie Cairo.